So we're going to start our discussion of conic sections with a parabola, right? It's one you've probably seen before. Now, in algebra classes, or, or maybe a pre-cal class, you were probably given a quadratic equation like this one and just told that its graph has a U-shape, and we call that shape a parabola. Now, that's fine as far as it goes, and it, and it does give you a lot of things to talk about and a lot of opportunities to practice other techniques that you've been learning, but it's really putting the cart before the horse. The formal definition of a, of a parabola actually goes back further to geometry. The geometry definition is based on what's called a locus of points. And that, that's a, a geometric definition that describes a set of points based on some required properties. So for parabola, we're going to define it as the set of points in a plane where the distance from each point to a fixed point called the focus is the same as the distance from that point to a fixed line called the directrix. And so I've, I've, got a, I've got a little example here for us to look at, kind of get an idea for what this is talking about. This upper point here is the focus. And this line down here, this is the directrix. See, the definition here does, does include a term you're, you're probably familiar with. It's the vertex, right? The vertex is uh, a point that is exactly halfway in between the focus and the directrix. So that would be this point here. Now that point is actually on the parabola. And you see it, it, it does meet the definition. This distance here is the same as this distance here, right? Those are the two distances we're talking about, the distance from the point up to the focus and the distance from the point down to the directrix. So if we, want, if we wanted to get uh, some other points here, uh, if we want to say we wanted to get a point on this line here, that's uh, four units away from the directrix, but that would have to be four units away from the focus. So that's going to be right around here somewhere. And if we did the same thing on the other side, right, we'd, we'd get the mirror image of that point, something right around there. And you can already see this kind of cup-shaped, U-shape that you're used to from your algebra classes start, starting to kind of show up here. All right, now I, I drew this just for demonstration purposes, with the directrix of a horizontal line and the focus above the directrix. But there's nothing in the in the definition that puts any constraints on how these two parts are oriented with respect to each other. We could just as easily draw the uh, directrix above the focus. All right, so this point here is now the focus. The directrix is still the line, and the vertex is this point here in the middle. And that vertex is always going to be between the focus and the directrix. Now, if you do this, if you do, if you orient them this way, then you're going to get an upside-down parabola, which, again, you've also probably seen before. So we, we, we can continue with this, right? There, there's also no, no rule in the definition saying that the, uh, the directrix has to be horizontal. Directrix could be a vertical line, where we're going to see the implications of that in a, in a little bit here. In that case, instead of getting a parabola that opens up and down, you're going to get one that opens left or right. And there, there also isn't even anything in there saying that the directrix can't be a diagonal line. Or in which case, you get, you get a, a parabola that looks like one, one of these four that's just been rotated through a certain number of degrees. Uh, and as we go along here, we'll take a look at all of those cases, see what all of those equations look like. So what we want to do next is, is derive an equation for the parabola, because we, we are looking at this from an algebra perspective. Right? We want to take that geometry definition and turn it into an algebra one that is based on some kind of formula or equation. So I've, I've got a setup here for us to start with, and I've, I've drawn the directrix horizontal, and I've put the, the focus above it that's the upper of the two points and really the the key is some the key thing i did here is i put the vertex on the uh on the origin obviously we we may want it to be other places and we are going to look at that situation in the next lecture but for now locating the vertex there is going to make the calculations a whole lot more straightforward all right so how am i going to get this equation well the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to define this distance here from the focus to the vertex to be A. And because the vertex has to be halfway between 
to focus on the directrix, that means that this distance here is also A. Or now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pick a point over here somewhere. Let's call this X comma Y. And I'm going to pick this point so that it's on the parabola. All right, so then what do I know about this line? Well, I know that because just from the parabola's definition, this distance has to be equal to this distance. So if I call this one D1 and I call this one D2, I know they have to be equal to each other. Let me put those up a little higher. Well, what are these distances? Oh, well, D2 is, D2 is pretty easy to find. This distance is A. This distance is Y. So D2 must be A plus Y. Okay, so how, how about D1? Well, the coordinates of the vertex, because it's on the Y axis, must be 0, comma, A. So now I, I can find D1. I can do this using the distance formula. This must be the square root of x minus 0 squared plus y minus a squared. Well, good. Now, now i got an equation. I've got x's and y's. All, all I want to do now is, uh, is simplify this a little bit. So I'm going to start by squaring both sides. So the square root is going to go away. And the left side will be x squared plus y minus a squared equals, I'm going to flip those around, y plus a squared. And I'm going to multiply those two squares out. This will be x squared plus y squared minus 2ay plus a squared equals y squared plus 2ay plus a squared. And that's the x side because I can cancel a lot of stuff. I can subtract y squared from both sides. I can subtract a squared from both sides. And all that's left is x squared minus 2ay equals to a y and now let's get the let's get the y's on the on the right side so this is if i add 2 a y to both sides x squared equals 4 a y and that's my equation right specifically that's the equation of a parabola where the directrix is below the focus right, so it, it opens up uh, and where the vertex is on the origin Okay, well, how about if I had put uh, the directrix above the focus, right? Suppose, suppose I had just hypothetically switched those two parts. Well, I'm, I'm going to leave doing, going through the calculations again uh, as an exercise. If, if you do that, you're going to come out with almost exactly the same thing. Instead of x squared equals 4ay, you're going to get x squared equals minus 4ay, and you're seeing exactly the same relationship that you saw uh, in your algebra or pre-calc classes. Right? If that leading coefficient is positive, the parabola opens up. If the leading coefficient is negative, the parabola opens down. So what I've done here is uh, I've summarized uh, the two results I talked about on the last page. Those were, that's what's on the top line. And, I, and I've added two new equations here. And, and I know this kind of maybe starts to look like a lot. Uh, but there's a lot of relationships here. It's really not, it's not as difficult to remember as you might think. If your equation has an x squared term, the parabola opens up down. If your parabola has a y squared term, if your equation has a y squared term, then your parabola opens left and right. If the A part is positive, it opens up or to the right. And if the A part is negative, it opens down or to the left. Right. So there, there's our equation. I know I didn't derive the left and right one. Uh, again, I, I encourage you to do that yourself. The procedure is, is very similar to the one we just did. Uh, for the up and down parabolas. So in the next lecture, we're going to make just a little tweak to the equations that we derived here and see how we can come up with the more general equation 
where the vertex is at some location other than sitting on the origin.